When we think of babies, usually what comes to mind are the cute images we see of healthy newborns. Peaceful sleep, coos, smiles, cuddles, the happy family unit we see portrayed by celebrities and on television. And when you think of the word postpartum, what comes to mind? Do you continue to see the images of that same happy family unit? Maybe a mom who has recently given birth to a child, healing naturally and bonding with her newborn, surrounded by a community of support? Or does your mind jump to the stigma associated with the word postpartum? Postpartum depression. According to Baby Blue's connection, a mother may experience an array of confusing and frightening symptoms for which she is completely unprepared. She might find herself unable to sleep or eat, be subject to sudden panic attacks, or feel nothing toward the baby she had expected to enjoy. Often mothers feel inadequate and guilty, afraid to admit their feelings, especially in an age where women are expected to be super moms. This inability to ask for help only leads to further isolation and a deepening of their depression. Not only is it okay to ask for help, it is necessary. I started feeling things were not right probably two to three weeks after I had my daughter um, and when my husband went back to work. In the weeks after my pregnancy, I felt anxious, overwhelmed, insecure. I just felt completely lost. I was sleeping even through the night by this time and still would wake up like a truck had hit me. Just could not get any energy. Felt almost in a daze like my head was in clouds. This all kind of goes downhill from there and then also thoughts of uh, suicide. Um, so those are the symptoms that I experienced at the time. Sometime during or after pregnancy, one out of seven women will develop distressing symptoms. Symptoms linked to a spectrum of illnesses known as perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. Just like we inherit heart disease, we might be predisposed to anxiety or depression or obsessive compulsive disorder. Maybe we had um, a traumatic event in our past. That would also add to it. Many women I've worked with have really talked about the conspiracy of silence, that nobody t feels comfortable confessing how hard it really is or what a rough time they had. There is no need to suffer in silence. You deserve to get help. You deserve to meet professionals who are knowledgeable about perinatal mood disorder. You deserve to have a support group where you can be open and honest. You deserve to be well. There's incredible hope. This is one of the most treatable illnesses that I have ever worked with. daughter was a baby I had a really hard time with her there were many times that I thought I just I'm just not cut out for this I just want to quit my job <laughs> and that's a very lonely feeling and I'm very embarrassed about that when you google postpartum support you get this and when you watch mainstream media, you are subjected to false expectations, such as this. Now that I have my Electrolux washer and perfect steam dryer, I can juggle more things in my day. With the Electrolux washer and perfect steam dryer, you can remove wrinkles and wash and dry clothes in just 36 minutes. So you can be even more amazing. Nice catch. 
Electrolux. Be even more amazing. According to ABC Doula, a postpartum doula is a woman trained to give in-home care to mothers with their newborns. Many mothers discover that the challenges they face once they bring their newborn home are more than they anticipated. Current research has shown that women who are nurtured during their early postpartum days allowed to rest and bond with their infants and taught the basics of newborn care, experienced more success with breastfeeding, better postpartum adjustment, less postpartum depression, and more overall confidence in their parenting. It is not realistic to expect a shift in our culture so that we are no longer displaced from our families. The autonomy in our society is valued highly, and the reality is that our families are spread thin throughout the country and the world. We are not typically surrounded by the support of our mothers, grandmothers, sisters, aunts, and friends. We must find support in what does surround us. I believe there is a great need in bringing awareness to the resources that do exist in our culture and celebrating the success of the tools within our reach. I plan to work closely with administrators at the hospital where I work in order to reevaluate the educational videos and pamphlets and handouts that we provide to our postpartum families. I am coordinating an in-service for the nursing staff in order to bring more awareness and equip them with more techniques for empowering and nurturing our patient population. Andrew is a typical newborn. To the casual observer, the only real pattern he seems to follow in his behavior is to move between crying, feeding, and sleep. In the early 1960s, scientists Heinz Prechtel and Peter Wolf found that the newborn's seemingly random and unrelated activities fell into six distinct states. These six states of consciousness include two sleep states, quiet sleep and active sleep. Active sleep is also known as rapid eye movement or REM sleep. There are three active states, quiet alert, active alert, and crying. The last state, drowsiness, is the transition between sleep and wakefulness. Prechtel and Wolf made sense out of nonsense. Uh, up to that time, we were all confused by the random behaviors uh, uh, of the infant. And once we understand the six states of consciousness, the mysterious world of the infant makes much more sense. In each state, there are specific behaviors that are not found in the other states. And if parents understand which state the baby is in, they can much more easily read the baby's signals. Highly aroused infant state, and the one that's often the most troubling to parents, is crying. Parents tell us that they can begin to learn and distinguish their infant cries within the first few weeks. Studies show that most infants stop crying when picked up within 90 seconds of beginning to cry. We try and help parents um, understand about infant crying, that it's normal. They may just want to be held. I always tell parents that you really can't spoil your infant in those early weeks and early days, that whole first three-month period. Don't worry about holding too much. Don't worry about being too responsive. I think for both parents um, and healthcare providers, as they're aware of the infant state behavior and the ways that the infant is communicating, they can be more appropriately responsive. That was a short clip from a film called Amazing Talents of the Newborn. This is a small example of the vast resources of information out there not being utilized by the majority of our postpartum healthcare workers and postpartum families. Have you ever heard the phrase, there's no handbook on how to be a parent? Well, there actually is. It comes in the form of books, magazines, videos, websites. There is so much wonderful information out there. Part of my journey in affecting change is to find ways in which we can make this information, these tools, more accessible to our postpartum families. <laughs>